Good morning, Christos Anesti. <clears throat> what a joy it is to be back here together with you again today. I thank you for those of you who are able to be here in person today, whether here in the gallery or the grand room. We also know that there are those that are joining us still online because of circumstances that, uh, that present themselves. And so we are still together as one Holy Trinity family. So whether you are worshiping in person here in the church or uh, at your homes and with your families or in whatever circumstances you may be today, we welcome you to the Divine Liturgy, the first in-person one here at Holy Trinity Church again in the last 10 weeks. How good it is to be here. God bless you. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Christos anesiek nekron, thanato, thanaton, patisas, Ketisen tis blimasi zoin charisamenos. Christ is risen from the dead by death, trampling down upon death and to the Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Archbishop and Father Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, and for our armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faith who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Shout to God all the earth through the intercessions of the Theotokos. 
Savior, save us. Sing now to his name, give glory to his praise. Tes brasias de seu toco, só ter só os animais. Say to God, how fearful are your works. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, save your us. Let all the earth worship you and sing to you. Tes brasias de seu toco, só ter só os animais. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now, now and, and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, save yourself. And the love of Sos and the Leison, Gedia Philax, and the Mass of Theos, the Sicharity. Tis Panagia Sacrandu, Hyperblogimenis, and Doxo Despinissimon, Theotoku, Kia Hyperthanu Marias, Meta Pandon, the Neum Nimnevs, and Desi Aptus Kelinus, Kepas and in Zoinimon Christo to Theo, Parathometha. Lord our God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us of hope in you. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Save us, O Son of God, who rose from the dead, save us who sing to you, Alleluia. May he cause his face to shine upon us and have mercy on us. So, so, demasiateu, O Anastas, Eknekron, Savandasi, Alleluia. That we may know his way on earth, your salvation among all the nations. Save us, O Son of God, who rose from the dead. Save us who sing to you, Alleluia. Let all the peoples give thanks to you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. So, so, demasiateu, O Anastas, Egnecron, Salondasi, Alleluia. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. O monogenis, Dios, que logos tu theu, Athanatosi parco, ye gata de glamenos di atini mercheron sotirian, sagotine, ectis aias teotoku, ye agi parthenu marias, atreptos en antropisas. Stavrotis de Christe o Theos, vanatotanot hompatisas. Gis on tis aias triados, sin doxas omenos to patri, get o ai obnad mati, so son ima. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you. 
Lord. Master and Lord our God, you've established in heaven the orders and hosts of angels and archangels to minister to your glory. Grant that the holy angels may end with us, that together we may serve and glorify your goodness. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Christos Worship the Word who is unoriginate with the Father and the Spirit who was born from the Virgin for our salvation, O believers, and let us sing His praise. <clears throat> for His goodness He was pleased to ascend the cross in the flesh and to undergo death and to raise up those who had died by His glorious Resurrection. Please join your Holy Trinity family back together again here or online with the hymn of our church. Evloyitosi Christe Othe O Simon O Pansophus Tu Sali Descended into the grave, O immortal one, yet you destroyed the power of Hades and arose as victor, O Christ God, calling to the mere bearing women, rejoice and giving peace to your apostles. O oh, you who grants resurrection to the fallen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Holy Let us pray to the Lord. God. Holy God, you dwell among your saints, your praise, Lord, the seraphim with the thrice holy name. Holy and glorified God. by the church and worshiped by all the heavenly powers. Draw all 
all things out of nothing and to be in your creator later on. Holy Him, Let us attend. You shall guard us, O Lord. You shall preserve us. Wisdom. The reading is from Acts of the Apostles. Let us attend. In those days, as we apostles were going to a place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much to gain by soothsaying. She followed Paul and us, crying, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul was annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that, their hope gain was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs which is not lawful for us Romans to accept or, pra or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore their garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's fetters were unfastened. When the jailer woke, and he saw the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for the lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Men, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of God to him and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour that night and washed it, their wounds, and he, bap and he was baptized at once with all his family. Then he brought them up to his house and set the food before them, and he rejoiced with all his household that he believed in God. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us.
us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us attend. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. At that time, as Jesus passed by, he saw a blind man, a man blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God may be manifest in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night comes when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes with the clay, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He said, I am the man. They said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes, and the Pharisees asked him again how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such things? There was a division among them. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they had called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how he sees now, we do not know. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess him to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he's a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you too want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is a marvel. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Good morning, Christos Anesti. From the night of the resurrection, 
anastasi and the divine liturgy then on holy saturday morning to then we've all been waiting for you the church has been waiting for you and it has been untouched since that night in hopes that you would actually be able to be here to see the resurrection banner with your own eyes to walk on the leaves from holy saturday morning with your own feet to hear the hymns and to see me wearing vestments that i only wear at anastasi we just had everything waiting for you so what a joy it is to be here with you today in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen it's good to be home and it's good to be in this beautiful place surrounded by God's beauty in so many ways. This church, the icons on the walls and the living icons that I see in front of me, and somehow, after all this time, I think I've developed the ability to see right through that camera to you wherever you are, because I know your hearts and I know you're here. When we were doing the iconography of this church and we're laying out the icon iconographic plan, originally, the icon up in the top here. Those of you that aren't here today, you know if you look up over your shoulders, you know what I'm talking about. It was supposed to be the baptism of Christ, but the iconographer said, no, let's save that when we do the baptistry. So instead, we put the, the, uh, the transfiguration of Jesus Christ up there. And I am so thankful for that. Not only having tra traveled on pilgrimage to Mount, Mount uh, Tabor before, but also because it's provided so many inspiring lessons, and that includes one today. So actually, rather taking the resurrection gospel, which you would normally hear on Anastasia, I'm actually going to take a piece from the gospel of the transfiguration of Christ, and I think you'll see why. At that time, Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance was altered, and his raiment became dazzling white. And behold, two men talked with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they wakened, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. Could you join me in that today as our own offering to the Lord together. Lord, it is good that we are here. Out of the whirlwind of emotions, thoughts, and prayers that are swirling around this holy place today and in the homes of those who are still joining us from online, my heart has found it sim itself simply clinging to those words of St. Peter today. Lord, it is good that we are here. Again, Lord, it is good that we are here. Over the last 10 weeks, and it actually has been 10 weeks since we've been able to celebrate the holy services in person as a church family, we've walked a path that was before unimaginable. Following the guidelines of civil authorities and the spiritual directions of ecclesiastical leaders, all the way from His All Holiness Patriarch Bartholomew, to His Eminence Archbishop Elfidophoros, to our own Metropolitan Savas. We have done our part to reduce the spread of this terrible pandemic and protect the people of this Holy Church and those around us. I thank you for your understanding, for your support, your prayers, and especially for your sacrifices during this time. Indeed, each of us has had our own challenges. Glory to God, we have had no direct COVID-19 deaths in this parish. Though some wonderful and long-time faithful members of this parish have gone on to meet the Lord in these recent days. Today, they celebrate with us on the other side of God's heavenly kingdom. As your priest, and I know Father Radu shares many of these thoughts, I cannot thank you enough for the courage, the faithfulness, and even the flexibility with which we have all faced this. Simply being able to withstand the shock 
of having me say to you with a straight face, please don't come to church, uh, was a great accomplishment. My guess is the phones, the texts, the emails, and the social media is lit up with people saying, did you hear what Father John just said? He said, don't come to church. If you thought it was hard to hear those words, you can imagine how hard it was to say them. I think I signed a paper a long time ago that said I would never actually say those things after I got ordained. But as we look back over all of this, we first of all pray for those all around the world who have died and those whose lives have been so severely impacted by this disease. Nothing that we have experienced can compare. And may God have mercy on all of them. But not to minimize it, you have sacrificed and you have been affected in many ways, sometimes many very serious ways. And it has got gone without notice, either by your church family or especially by the Lord. If I may, please allow me to recognize your amazing testimony of faith through it all. You followed in the footsteps of our forefathers in your dedication to build this beautiful church that we opened in June of 2013, and then in its seventh year, its seventh Lent, its seventh Holy Week, and its seventh celebration of Pascha, you were not permitted to attend. And yet hundreds of our Holy Trinity parishioners and thousands of our extended Holy Trinity online family joined us through their televisions, their computers, and their phones. Thank you all for your sacrifice and your unstoppable faith. You could not walk into the narthex and, as usual, light candles for yourselves, your loved ones, as you usually do when you enter the church, along with prayers for them all. But when the opportunity came for you to have one lit for you through online requests, you responded in numbers far beyond what we would actually normally have experienced in person. Thank you for your sacrifice and for your unwavering support for your holy church. And moms, you were not able to walk into church on Mother's Day and have a smiling Goyen hand you a flower as a symbol of their love and respect. But you indeed were honored and you were remembered as that too transitioned online and many, many flowers were placed in the church on that day in your name and in memory of our beloved mothers who had gone before us. Thank you for your sacrifice and your generous offerings of love. And you have been limited in your usual funeral practices, not allowing the many, many people that would normally come, but only five from the immediate family. You have rescheduled weddings. You have delayed baptisms. You've done so much more. Thank you for your willingness to be flexible and for not taking out your frustrations on your church and on your priests. Thank you very much. Lord, it is good that we are here. One more time. Lord, it is good that we are here. And my beloved Holy Trinity family, it is good that you are here and we are here together again. I can't thank you enough for the expressions of love and concern and support and prayer and candles lit online and emails and notes and every other way that you have expressed your support for myself and for Father Rado as your priests during this time. I would not be honest if I didn't admit that it's been a challenging road. That struggle reached its full impact on Holy Saturday when in the morning Father Radu and I, through these very leaves which have been waiting for you, into empty spaces. And later on that evening, with just our small liturgical team here as we had the entire season, came out of that darkened royal doors, chanting, come receive the light, and Christ is risen to visibly empty chairs. We cried our way through much of that. But please know that as I stood on that platform in the middle of this church and raised this candle, sensing and chanting Christos Anesti, I could see each of you. And not only you, where you normally sit, but I could see 
the generations before in the 27 years that I've been blessed to be here and serve, I could see their hearts and their faith and hear their hymns. And certainly the priests who preceded us, whose names are inscribed in the steel columns which hold up that massive dome of this very church, this holy temple of God. They were chanting too. That was a tough day. But it still bore the glory of God. But we are priests and we are here to serve and it's not about us. We're also thankful beyond words to the team that walked this path with us as our liturgical army, as it were, to maintain the services online on your behalf, Presbytera Becky, Presbytera Loredana, Stefan Anna, and Rebecca, the Bordianus, for their help with the readings and the candle lightings and at the altar serving. Also Steve, Cole, and our seminarian in residence, Paul Murray, who sustained us so beautifully with their chanting during all of Lent and especially while Paul was here during Holy Week and even to this day, because of course we miss our beloved chanter George, but for the restriction reasons he's still not able to join us, though we know, all know that how much he wants to be here. And I thank our parish council and our ministry leaders who have adapted and put forth their best efforts to maintain as much of the life of this community as has been possible during this time. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you. So what has this all been for? Isn't that what we ask when we suffer? Why, why have I gone through this? You just heard the gospel. Jesus said to the man, to the parents of the man born blind in John 9, 3, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be manifest in him. Every suffering, every struggle is embedded with a purpose by God. In Isaiah 40, as the prophet talked about proclaiming the word of God, there's so much in that for us to not only have us look back and understand the purpose, but look forward and continue the progress. In verse 28 it says, we have become, excuse me, we by this time may have become tired, but our hope is in the Creator who never ever tires. In verse 28 Isaiah says, the Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. We may have thought mistakenly that we were somehow apart from God but we never left his embrace. In verse 11, Isaiah says, He will tend his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and you have been carried at every step along the way in the loving, caring arms and bosom of God. And we might have for a time thought, how much longer can I go? I can't go any further. But God is giving you the ability not only to survive, but to soar again, and in verse 31, what a magnificent verse, Isaiah reminds us, they who wait for the Lord, that is you and you, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You can imagine the challenge of trying to actually deliver a message of encouragement and hope after all this time. But the last liturgy I served over the chapel, I found it. And it was in the prayer of the Amvon, which is the prayer that the priest reads here right at the end of the liturgy. And in that prayer, I found God's plan, I found our purpose, and I found what the result of all of it was. The prayer is this, and you'll hear it at the end of the service. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to your clergy, <clears throat> to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. 
For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. So, finishing up with that prayer and the things which it evokes, my dear Holy Trinity family here and online, <clears throat> it is good that He is here because God blesses, God sanctifies, God protects, God glorifies, God does not forsake, God grants peace, and God gives good and perfect gifts. It is good that we are here, wherever you may be, because we are called by that prayer to praise the Lord which we are doing, <clears throat> to trust in the Lord which we have done, to inherit the faith which we have received from our forebearers, to love the beauty of God's house, and to give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to God forever. <clears throat> and it is good that he and we have been able to do all that because we pray today for the recipients of God's peace named in that prayer. The world, his churches, by the way, continue to pray for not only our clergy leading their parishes, but all our hierarchs as they make the wrenching decisions that they still need to continue to make in these days. Our leaders in public service, please pray, please, please pray for their divine guidance and the illumination to continue the path forward. <clears throat> our armed forces, because let us never forget that there is no day in the life of this world that we are without need of them to do their duty, and we continually pray for them. And finally, for all the people of God, you, you, and all who call upon his holy name. So whether you are with us in this very space this morning, or just down the hall, in the gallery, or in the grand room, or whether you are still participating online, I love you, we love you, God loves you, you are the people of God. This is his holy church. This is your church. And Lord, it is good that we are here. Lord, it is good that we are here. Amen. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Christ our God of the Alpha and the Offered One who receives and is attributed and to you we give glory together with your eternal Father and your Holy Ghost and life creating spirit now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice to the Holy Hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by Angelicos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ita quiero vi mysticos y quienes en las que te sopió triado y con trisado y nimo pasado en espacio y quien idiota y quien apotado con la rima. Ostan vasilea en tu nombre y tu lección de tres angelicas para tu espíritu monotaxis y en aleluya, aleluya. 
we who mystically represent the cherubim, sing the thrice holy hymn of the life giving Trinity. Let us lay aside the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross of Christ. We praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. We hope that the cross of joy has come to all the world. Ever blessed in the Lord, let us praise his resurrection from during the cross for us. He has destroyed death. Anastasi Christus, the Samini Proskinis, Menai, and Kirioni, Sunta, Morana, Namaki, Tonton, Savron, Su Christe Proskinum, Ketina, Ian, Suanasta, Sinin, and Ketoxas, and Sinai, and
Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, for forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, holy, with all the saints, Theotokos, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that your sac our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. the doors in wisdom let us attend I, be I believe in one God, God Father, Father Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in, and in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God begotten of the Father before all ages light of light true God of true God begotten not created of one essence with the Father through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds to the Father, who together, together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one <coughs> baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. Mercy and peace, a sacrifice of prayer. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is It is proper and right to sing to you, bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. 
For you are God, ineffable, beyond comprehension, invisible, beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, for all things we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying, Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us. On the night he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy, pure and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior, all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, on the third day, the ascension to heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Das act on son si prospero men cata panda que via panda. Please bow your heads. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. And we ask, pray, and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the gifts here presented. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. O teos celeste, mi tomata loga, and any somna. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. That which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that they may be those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of your Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in death, in condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual worship for those who are opposed in the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, saints, and believers. Σερατός της Παναγίας Αχράντου, υπερευλογημένη εν δόξου δεσποινή Σιμών Θεοτόκου και η Παρθένου Μαρία. Ποσίτσα, 
your son Lord, is truly Lord, risen Lord, from the grave on the third Lord, day. Lord, the the illumined, illumined, O new Jerusalem, for the glory of the Lord has arisen over you. Dance now for joy, Zion, and exult, and you be merry, O pure Theotokos, at the arising of the one you go. We also offer you this spiritual worship for the whole world, for the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, for those living in, in purity and holiness. And for those in public service, permit them, O Lord, to serve and govern in peace, that through the faithful conduct of their duties, we may live peaceful and serene lives in all piety and holiness. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth, and grant that with one heart, voice and one heart, we may glorify and praise your most... Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind, and all your people. And all your Great is the name people. of the Holy Trinity, always known ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Great is the name of the Holy Trinity, always known and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Great is the name of the Holy Trinity, always known and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That our loving God who has received them in his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altars and offering of spiritual fragrance may in return send upon his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope we ask, pray, and entreat, make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence, without fear of condemnation, to dare call, dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Patrimon, o endisuranis, aiestito tonomasu, el theto i vasiliasu, yanitito to telimasu, o senuranoke epitisis, tonartonimon tonepiusion, Vos simin simeron, piafe simin tau polimeta imon, os que mi safia mentisapelete simon, que mi is negis mas espirasmon, alarisa imas apotu pomiru. Oti suest in ivasilia, que dinamis que doxa, tu patros que tu yuk to yupnev matos nin que ai, que istu seonas to neono. Amin. Irini pasi. Que falasse monto kirio clinomen. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you've created all things, and by your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick position of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who God hears us from your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us. Let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand. And through us to all your people, God be merciful. 
Let us be attentive. The holy gifts for the holy people of God. Tahia Chrysahis. The Lamb of God is broken and stricken and broken. He is forever eaten, yet never consumed, but he sanctifies those who partake of him. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, and word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints, if I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place him in the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as to Judas, but as a thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King God. As we approach for our Holy Communion, those of us that are able to be in church today or in, in, in the church, entire church building here somewhere, um, we are repeating the announcement that was made on the last Sunday that we were here when we began to uh, exercise some of the extra precautions. And that is that <clears throat> in coming forward for Holy Communion, uh, where we ask you, first of all, uh, with, with your masks today, that you please remove your mask before you approach the chalice. Um, when you receive, we ask you to do as we did that Sunday, the common, actually more widely used Orthodox Christian practice throughout the world, and that is to simply open your mouth and allow the spoon to be put in and to drop the communion in your mouth. There's no need for you to close your lips. Uh, we will take extra caution to make sure that you receive the holy gifts safely. And then um, <clears throat> afterwards, we ask you to go take a piece of the andidron, consume that so that you do not spit the holy gifts out onto your mask and then have that mask either thrown away or washed through the laundry. So we are still taking extreme care to protect the holy body and blood of Christ, the holy mysteries. Uh, I realize that uh, <clears throat> there is also the situation that maybe not everyone, either in this church or in the grand room of the gallery, is... Uh, ready to return to Holy Communion yet, and we love all of you and understand that and give everybody the opportunity to make that choice as God guides your heart. Lest there be any doubt whatsoever or any misinterpretations of our adjustment of the practices, especially regarding the open mouth communion, uh, I refer you back to a sermon a number of weeks ago prior to all of this starting, and it's still on our website under the sermon archives, and the title is, Can Holy Communion Make Me sick, and the answer throughout the history of the church, to this very day, to this very liturgy, to this very priest, is absolutely not. 
And I'll remind you that this is not just my opinion or my teaching, but it is the long-standing teaching and firm position of the church. And on the corner, in the back of the altar, on the icon of St. John Chrysostom, right behind the altar there on the left, is the prayer that we finish the preparation of communion with before the divine liturgy. Inscribed in that scroll is the beginning of this prayer. And it is inscribed, I believe, according to our iconographer, everywhere where you see St. John Chrysostom, the author of this liturgy, on the wall. And just take comfort in these words. O God, our God, you sent the heavenly bread, food for the whole world, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. And he reminds us the purpose of Holy Communion. As Savior, Redeemer, and Benefactor to bless us and sanctify us. Bless this offering and accept it upon your heavenly altar. As a good and loving God, remember those who brought it and those for whom it was brought. Keep us blameless in the celebration of your divine mysteries, for sanctified and glorified is your most honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. So wherever God leads your heart today, we ask you to please abide by the directives that you have been given, understanding that we do so with our complete and firm faith in the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you all. For those, of you in, for those of you in the main church who are uh, communing today, I will bring the chalice out here. For those of you who are in the gallery or the grand room, we ask you to please be patient. Father Rado will be coming forward with two acolytes to the chalice there. We also remind you that as you come forward, please simply allow the acolytes that are holding the cloth to hold that cloth between the chalice and you. It is not necessary for you to touch that. Um, in the Russian tradition, for example, they actually keep their hands like this so that they don't get in the way, but you may hold them at your side, whatever it is that is comfortable for you, but simply allow, open your mouth, allow us to place the communion in, and then proceed to, to your andidron. Thank you. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
O oh God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Christos Agnesti Egnekron Lanato Lanaton Pati Wash away, O Lord, by your holy blood, the sins of those commemorated through the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. Be exalted, O God, of the heavens, may your glory be above the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, may your glory be above the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, mutual, heavenly life, giving in us the mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. We pray for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day. Let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you. We thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls and bodies, that of our souls that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path, establish us firmly, firmly in your fear, guard our lives, and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, give a blessing. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power. And do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Christ Blessed is the name of the Lord both now and to the ages. Go on, O Makiri, O Gihi, Eadlai, Menon, Apatunin, Keos, Kueono. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Christ our God and our hope. Glory to you. May Christ our true God who rose from the dead have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of Saint <coughs> Meletius, the holy martyr, and of our father Simeon of the wondrous mountain, whose memories we celebrate this day, our father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, 
and of all the saints. Let's see, where did we leave off at Anastasi? I think it goes like this. Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. Christos Anbiya. Adarat Anbiya. Christos Vos Cres. Christos Vos Cres. Let me see. Almasia Kham. Hakam Kham. Christ is risen. Really is risen. Glory to his third day resurrection. Christos anesti ek nekron thanato thanaton patisas keti sendis mima sin zoin karis amenos. The Lord has risen. I know it's hard to sing with your masks on. We don't want anybody passing out. But take a good deep breath and let's do it. Christ is risen from the dead by death. and Lord be with you all. Good morning. Be seated for just a moment, please. What a joy it is to have you all here today. Ah, oh, Lord, it is good that we are here, huh? Absolutely. So thank you for being part of our sort of trial run opening uh, of trying to get things going again. I don't know what to tell you in terms of how things are going to progress. Uh, but I can tell you that they are progressing, thank God, and let's pray that they do continue to do so. You probably heard the announcements that, uh, that some counties are moving into green phase next week, and then hopefully some the week after, and the week after maybe that will be us, I don't know. And then we also have to kind of work our way through, if you remember the five-layer dip uh, that, that, uh, that ends up actually having us allowed to do this. So um, I just continue to commit along with George, our parish council president, and all of our ministry leaders in the parish council, that we will continue to move forward in a way that makes it possible to everybody, for everyone to participate at the level of their comfort. For those of you that are not here today, again, you are still part of this family. You have still joined us in worship, and we continue to reach out our arms and embrace and hope the day comes very soon when we will all be together physically again as the Holy Trinity family. Uh, so. I can tell you that at least for this week, this is what the story is. I don't know if you've heard of the feast of the leave taking of Pascha. So when there's a feast, then either a few days later or a week later, or sometimes with the case of Pascha, 40 days later, the entire feast comes back. It's called the leave taking. So it is the entire feast repeated again. So here's the offer to you, for those of you that would like to attend. Uh, we'll be doing, on Wednesday morning, starting at 8.30 with the Orthros, the entire Resurrection Orthros, the entire Resurrection Liturgy, all over again. It's kind of like if you missed it last time and you actually want to come this time, it's like you never missed it at all. Now, the only caveat is we are only able to have about 17 or 18, 19, whatever, 20 people in here, whoever we need for the liturgy, and then the remainder of you uh, because we are still limited by the 25 space, and we do not have the staff to be able to accommodate additional spaces during the weekday liturgies right now. So I will send out the email, and I will post the, uh, the registration to be able to allow anybody that wants to come for the return to the anastasy, I can call it, to come on Wednesday morning. It is a magnificent service. We'll do the whole thing, the, the 125 Christos Anestes, Jesus having risen from the grave, the whole canon, everything. Thursday, we have the Feast of the Annunciation. And by the way, we normally do weekday liturgies at the chapel. Because of the size of the chapel and because this is here, we're going to continue to join the services here until these restrictions are listed, and then we'll get back to the chapel for weekdays. So Thursday morning is the service. Hmm? Thurs Ascension. Thursday morning is the service of the Ascension of the Lord, not the Annunciation, the Ascension of the Lord. And that will be uh, celebrated here. And again, a registration will be posted online to, uh, to allow you to reserve, save your space for that. Uh, at this point in time, for all of those that are here this week, uh, as far as I can tell, you're free to register again for next week because we did not have the full hundred that we were capable of holding today for whatever reasons people have, and that's okay. 
I, I have no problem with that. We wanted to provide the maximum opportunity. So you're all welcome to come back again next week. And then we have more space for others next week. Remember, right now we can hold up to 100. Maybe this will only last another week. I don't know. Maybe we're going to be free beyond that. We'll just adjust as time goes. But it is so good to be with you here today. I can't. Do me a favor, just one second. I, I don't think this is unsafe. Just let me see your smiles. May I please see you smiling? You don't have to take it all the way off, but can I see your beautiful smiling faces? It is so good to see those. And I know you're smiling in, uh, on, online today too, so. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Uh, as you depart today, you are asked to please continue your social distance between the groups anyway. There is Andidaran that is, oh, right here. Okay, we'll leave it here. So we'll leave the Andidaran here. Pick up your piece, and you may have that as you go. And God willing, we'll see you this week if you're able to come. If not, we'll see you as soon as the Lord provides. Have a blessed day today. Christos Anesti.